that stuff on the floor right here? All right, so this is the uh, 03 30 engine that we just pulled out. We're about ready to dump the pan. As you can see, there's a huge amount of sludge here. So we're going to dump it to see how much fragments are in the bottom of this thing. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Keep going. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, fragments in the bottom. So, Jeez. wow. So this engine's toast, and feel that. So that's a fragment of an engine there. Feel that. Oh shoot. That's the bearing, the wow. bearing material. So we got bearing material in the bottom here, and uh, this is a toast engine if I've ever seen one. Let's see if there's any more been there. Yeah, there's another one. So here's another trick. Touch that. It's a bearing. So we have a toast. We have a toast engine, and we're going to get a new engine. See if we can figure out. We're going to pull the heads real quick and see if we can figure out oh, what's wrong with it. My wow. After I pulled the three liter Ford Ranger engine, I originally thought I was going to buy a long block and replace it in the truck. Knowing that I had uh, a leak somewhere in the engine or a possible head gasket problem, I wanted to disassemble it and prepare for the purchase of a long block and reassemble it. I decided that I'm going to put a five liter uh, Windsor block from a Explorer in the truck. And I decided that after I finished tearing this engine apart. What I do recommend is running a compression test if you have a three liter Ranger before spending any time and money. I wasted a lot of effort trying to keep this engine going and ultimately ended up breaking down and had to be towed back. The three liter engine is notorious for head, it's warping and bad gaskets. The problem is if the engine's running hot and it's not caught in time, you could have a severe problem and you have to rebuild the block there's no way around it i went and checked the rockers and four and three were loose which is not a good sign so what it told me is there was a problem in one of the cylinders at this point i went ahead and disassembled all the rockers so i could pull the head off i didn't see any bent rods but some of the rods were not in the best of condition. So it did show that maybe they had gotten plugged um, before the engine had failed. Because I knew the engine was toast, I didn't go a specific order to break the head bolts. Uh, normally you would go from side to side or middle out. Uh, at this point I knew I had a problem and I didn't care, but if you're disassembling and you want to reuse the head, you should follow the instructions to disassemble the, or to remove the head and the head bolts. At this point, I go ahead and uh, disassemble the other side. And some of the bolts were really crusted over, which showed possible an issue with the jacket. This head was stuck on pretty tight. And in, when this head comes off, you'll notice that there's a different 
head gasket. So at one point, someone had worked on this engine and one one cylinder or one head had a new head gasket, one had the original. So somebody had tried to repair this engine at one time. If you look at the cylinder on the back, it would be cylinder three. It is full of, of coolant, which means there's a crack in the block somewhere. This is probably, this explains the melt shake and it also explains the problem with the engine and that the block would have to be rebuilt and not salvageable. So if you like this uh, video, go ahead and smash the like button below. Um, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell if you want some notifications. See you next time on Chasing Mustangs. Thanks. All right, Great cool. job. Yeah. I see it like literally every day. <laughs>